Well, howdy, partner. You know, if you're anything like me, you probably have trouble getting out of bed on rainy days like this. But you know what I think of? I think of something that might give me a little pep in my step. Something that might break through them clouds and let that glorious sun shine on through. And we both know what that something is, don't we? <laughs> yes, sirree. It's Steve Hayes, tired old queen at the movies. So let's saddle up, head across that prairie, and get us some Steve Hayes. Come on now. Johnny. Tired old queen at the movies. Johnny, I wanted to do a western, so I decided to go with one that starred the late and great Miss Jane Russell, 1955's The Tall Men, with Clark Gable, Jane Russell, Robert Ryan, and Cameron Mitchell, directed by Raoul Walsh. This was the one and only time that Jane Russell got to work with Gable, and they were terrific together. Jane had been discovered by Howard Hughes in the 40s. He designed a special brassiere for her. She started out in westerns, essentially. She made this movie called The Outlaw, which was about Billy the Kid. And the publicity stills of this were so notorious that they <laughs> refused to release the movie for four years. She was essentially made a star based on her publicity photographs. They just kept... Howard Hughes was a smart man, and he just kept turning them out and turning them out. And she was a young girl. She was always photographed like a tramp. She had this incredible chest and she always had these low cleavage shots, but she was basically a really good girl. You know, she she went out and married her high school sweetheart who became a pro football player and she was married to him for a good num amount of her career. It's not that I mind being stared at. That's part of being a female. But I don't like being weighed, measured, and counted. This was a big, huge Vista Vision, like Cinemascope and Technicolor. They went on location. They went down to Mexico for the cattle drive. They went up into the Rocky Mountains for the snow sequences. And it's very, very impressive. The first half hour to 45 minutes of this film, you cannot beat. It's about a guy and his brother. Uh, right after the Civil War, Clark Gable and his younger brother, played by Cameron Mitchell, and they were part of Quantrill's Raiders, and they're trying to, oh, just m m eke a living out after the war. Expensive living hereabouts, huh? They call it living. And they run up against this guy named Stark, and that's played by Robert Ryan. Robert Ryan was one of the most interesting men in movies. He was a big, tall, gaunt sort of guy. He started out playing um, kind of nice leading parts, and then when he came back from the war, he played a psychopath in a movie called Crossfire about anti-Semitism. I wouldn't say anything about this, Leroy. I wouldn't say anything about talking to Floyd. He got an Oscar nomination, and forever after that, he played nasty, nasty characters. The big difference is I'm no fool. The thing about Robert Ryan that was always so great was that he was so unlike that in real life. He was a liberal. He was one of the nicest guys in town, much like Richard Widmark. Uh, always played the heavy and the nasty, but in actuality was really, really a nice guy. Rainbows aren't a matter of geography. You can find them anywhere. They meet up with this woman who's trapped in a in a wagon train attacked by Indians in the winter time in the Rockies and she's the only survivor of this massacre her name's Nella and and uh, she's always saying to Gable hey pull my my boot off my feet are killing me you know, she's a real no-nonsense sort of girl. And she's and throughout this movie, she sings this song. So they had to have Jane Russell sing a song, you know. I want a tall man. Don't want a small man. Long as he is all man, that's good enough for me. Right away, you know that they have this sexual relationship as much as they could in the 50s. I'm kind of bad for Um, but she just keeps saying no, no, no to him. And he keeps saying, well, I don't care. And that makes her come back. And then she'll say no, no, no. And this is the dynamic through the whole movie. But I hope you find what you're looking for. Thanks. Yeah. You might be needing this when you get around to staking out a new claim. Now, this is a great Western in terms of it has everything. The cattle stampede. The fight with the Indians. The fight with the rustlers it has the blizzards. So if they did a Western in a movie, it had to be that much bigger and that much better. Raoul Walsh, who directed this, and he it was one of the great 
action directors. He had been in silent movies. He played, as a matter of fact, John Wilkes Booth in Birth of a Nation for D.W. Griffith. He then lost an eye. He always had a patch after that. And he went into directing. And he directed some of the big war movies and some of the big Errol Flynn movies. He directed Objective Burma and They Died With Their Boots On, about Custer's Last Stand. He directed film noirs like They Drive By Night with Humphrey Bogart and Ida Lupino. And he was just sort of a man's man director. And Gable worked very well when he had a real man man director. And because uh, Russell was always around men, there were always a lot of men circling Russell, she was used to that and she didn't mind that either. She was a good gal. <laughs> we lost Jane Russell recently and um, she had a rough time towards the end, but she was a good gal all the way through. And she was a unique screen presence. She was a voluptuous, smart, sexy dame. The type that we don't have anymore. And I'll miss her. All men are no good, but he's the worst of all. So for Jane Russell, Clark Gable, and Robert Ryan, I highly recommend Raoul Walsh's The Tall Men. <laughs> Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let me put it down. <laughs> Let me put it down. You have no taste and uh, you're lousy in bed. No, not that kind of put down. Oh, sorry. <laughs>